In this video, I'm going to go over some advanced prompting techniques. I'm a professional landscape photographer by trade and am represented in galleries who sell my work as fine art. I'm going to show you how I translate that skill set into beautiful AI images, specifically landscape and environments, and how you can do it too. All right. Let's get into it. All right, so here is the setup. Go over some basics here. First, I'm rendering these out at full quality, uh, aspect ratio of 16 by nine, because it's a landscape photo, literally landscape. I mean, landscape photos don't need to be landscape oriented, but that's what I'm going for in this image. So that's gonna be my baseline. And I'm starting off the prompt with um, a photograph of. So a photograph of, and, and there we move on. This is the very basic um, prompt here, and it's a photograph of Main Street, Woodstock, Vermont. So we're getting this very baseline. This is what AI interprets Main Street of Woodstock, Vermont. It's not actually it. It's an interpretation of it, but, uh, you know, it could very well be. I, I wanted the aesthetic of, of that town, that village in Vermont, and... I up one so we could take a look at it and, you know, pretty nice. I'm not surprised that uh, out of the gate, mid-journey, you say Vermont and it went to autumn. So I'm going to push away from that, even though it's my favorite time of year. But there we go. That is a photograph of Main Street, Woodstock, Vermont. All right, the next step here is picking our gear. And this is uh, this is fun when you're using mid-journey because the sky's the limit. There's no budget. You can take any camera you want out there virtually. It's not going to be exact, but it you know it, I find it does find the essence of these different cameras. All right, the, the first one is the um, Canon R5, you know, base camera. Excellent to use something that's represented well on the internet, and I think there are a lot of R5 shooters out there. So, yeah, this is what the R5 uh, look is. So it's a photo of Main Street, Woodstock, Vermont, comma, Canon R5. Our next one is the uh, Leica S3. So same prompt, just with Leica S3 at the end. Um, I really, I really like this one. Um, these are, it's an expensive camera. I'll tell you that. And it's not, not cheap. And, and then to go even bigger, cause why not? I think this is like an $80,000 camera. It's the phase one XF IQ four. So I look at all these images, you know, as I'm starting to build my prompt and you know, the, you can always change this stuff, but I, I, I try to, you know, this is just, we're laying the foundation here and out of the gate, I like the, the Leica look. I think it has the, a different feel to it. It's got a different essence to it. And, um, you know, all of these cameras have, have different signatures and mid journeys interpretation of the Leica. I, I kind of dig. So that's the one I'm going to go with and we'll move forward. All right. Our next choice, you know, as we're setting this whole thing up is lenses, you know, goes along with the camera. Lenses make a big difference in what you're you're seeing and and what is being created. So the first lens I went with was a 16 millimeter. That's a wide angle lens. It, it's it's pretty wide. I I would say about 10 millimeters. You're getting on the edge of um, a lot of distortion. And eight millimeters is considered fisheye. So um, 16 still has it it has some bowing to it, but um, you know, that's not represented really in AI, that, that, that detail. Uh, what is represented is the field of view. So here is 16. Then I tried 24. It's a little narrower. And then my next jump is the 35 millimeter. And that's pretty cool. That's a, that's a very standard lens, you know, those were basically built into two cameras, uh, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, like a 35 millimeter. That's what it is. And then I jumped up to the 200 millimeter. And, you know, if you're not a photographer, you might not know this, but uh, when you get to 200 millimeters uh, or the long focal length, not only are you zooming in, but what you're doing is creating compression. So you're making things look like they're closer together, 
wide angle lenses make things look further apart. They add space between objects. Long lenses, telephoto lenses start to compress. So we're creating compression. And this, I mean, a lot of these, but this, this uh, number two really illustrates that, you know, these buildings obviously are right on top of each other, but it looks like the cars are closer together. The buildings are closer together. This background mountain or hill is closer than what it feels like um, in our, our 16 millimeter. And I know they're not the same images, but the, uh, the, the 200 brings it in closer, even though it isn't physically closer. It gives the illusion with compression that it's closer. Our next choice with uh, going out and, and photographing a location would be time of day. This first image is, uh, so I've added on to our, our, as we're building this prompt, I've added on. This one is golden hour. So golden hour either starts at sunrise or and goes for an hour, or golden hour can be the hour before for sunset so it ends right when the sun disappears this is golden hour it's beautiful a lot of movies a lot of cinematic stuff it tries to use the golden hour it's 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 beautiful soft lighting it, it reduces contrast um, and usually it has a nice warm feel to it because the sunbeams are going through a lot more of atmosphere our our next image is blue hour so blue hour is an hour before sunrise or an hour after sunset. It's another great time to shoot. You still can have detail in the sky, but you don't have the harsh lighting conditions that the sun can create, especially if it's a clear day. Blue hour, you know, gives you this really nice twilight feel. And you can see we still have our, our you know, it's starting to be night, but the sky isn't just blacked out. There's still information there. So blue hour is another great time for, for photography, noon, midday. So a lot of landscape photographers, that's not the time to go out and shoot. It is okay. Uh, I, I know people, um, that do architectural photography, which I guess this would be considered since I'm photographing buildings and stuff, go out noon, midday, because um, with the sun directly uh, above, it creates distinct, crisp, high contrast shadows. You can get some really interesting stuff. And it's, it's a unique look. It's a unique choice. Um, it's out there. It's, I definitely, you know, there, there's an old saying between 10 and 3, uh, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., photographers put away their cameras. It's tough. You shoot a wedding. But, and and you got to do shots midday, it's tough. It, it's hard. This next one, I put in diffuse lighting. So this is, while it's not a time of day, it's a type of lighting. It's very soft. Like all the shadowing is extremely soft. Even coming off uh, these street lamps, you know, you're, well, this one, uh, number three is a little different. It, it kind of gave us some crisp shadows. But if you look at, at the other ones, the shadowing is softened and the lighting is softened. So it's a diffuse, very soft, great for portraits. You know, it's going to take kind of the detail out of, out of the image. So, uh, this is diffuse lighting and then night lighting, um, little harsher, no detail or no, very little to no detail in the sky, even rendering out of mid journey. And it's all, um, artificial lighting that you see. So this is night photography. All right, the next big uh, decision that we would make when we're um, going out in the field to shoot uh, is, or as we're building our prompt, as we're doing here, is the time of year, the season. So this first one is summer. As you can see, um, you know, summer mid-journey knows to give you really thick, full trees and heavy shadowing underneath those trees. And... Um, beautiful stuff i mean this really gives off the vibe of uh of of vermont in the summer i uh i, I like the way mid journey interprets that next one is fall i mean hey vermont is synonymous with fall it's uh it's probably the greatest place on this planet to experience autumn and yeah beautiful beautiful stuff winter here's winter and great atmospheric stuff some of us prefer winter yes i'm one of those you know, can't get enough of, you know, snowboarding and stuff and, and winter sports. So 
I love winter, could do without summer. And then here's spring. I, it's amazing, like, like Mid Journey gets it, like not to, not to fill the tree in completely, like just give it light foliage, you know, it's, it's filling in, it's, it's not complete yet. I mean, that, that nails it. So that's spring. I think we're going to move forward with winter. Um, I think that gives us a lot of opportunity and um, not, not the predictability of going with an autumn shot. So I'm going to go with winter on our, our prompt building here. Okay, our next choice. Well, it's not really a choice because you're, you know, we have no control over this and it's the weather and that's fine. You just have to know what to expect when you go out in different weather um, situations. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll go on a photography trip and, you know, I'll have to wait around days, days. Sometimes the whole trip will go by and I just won't get the correct weather that I need for, for my photograph. So I'll have to bag the trip and come back, you know, and, um, you know, this happens. And, and sometimes, you know, you design an image in your head that you want photographically, and sometimes it takes years, um, especially when you're dealing with autumn work, which I do a lot. Check out my Instagram. You can, it can be years and years of repetitive shooting of the same location until you get the image that, that you've dreamt up. A little different than AI in that. So um, this first uh, atmospheric or, or weather um, situation I have here is is rain. It's great. Rain is great uh, at night. You know, the thing with landscape photography and environmental photography is typically the worst weather creates the best images. It's, it's true. So uh, you go out in rain and you're going to have beautiful reflections. And look at how nicely Mid Journey handles that. You know, it, it has some beautiful streets here and everything. I don't know if, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I would buy it that that the uh, that the the reflections are accurate on these, um, but yeah, that that will give you a mood, and that's something that you have to think about. You can't, you know, if if you just write your prompt like, "Hey, give me an image of a lake in the mountains," and you don't take into account all these other things that we're building onto our prompt, you're not going to get as complex of an image. You may get lucky, but you know we're really dialing in here, so. Atmosphere is really important for landscape photography. So here's rain, blizzard. We're doing a winter image, so I think this is going to work its way into our our um, our prompt here. The blizzard, and it's just Mid Journey does a beautiful job. It it really does. And then fog. Fog is another one that will give you mood, incredible mood. But fog gives you a peaceful mood, and that's. That's going to be important later as as we get into to into building this prompt because uh, while you want atmospheric per perspective, which is the further down the road, the less visible something is, or the 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 colors become less uh, vibrant the further they are. That's all atmospheric perspective, which gives depth. So the problem with fog and and what we're going to find as we build the, out this prompt is that it gives the feeling of peacefulness because fog is very solid. And typically when you have a foggy situation, you don't have wind. So it, it's an easier way to create a mood, but this is fog and, and I think we're going with blizzard in our prompt. All right, so now we're into um, detailing our prompt and adding adding a little bit more subject matter into it and, and kind of fleshing that out. In this first, first set of images I've added uh, fog with fog volumetric lighting works really well um, if you don't understand what volumetric lighting is is uh, you know you have particles some type of particle within a container or within your atmosphere and the light is illuminating those particles so you can see like how um, you know the fog is illuminated and and blooms off of these lights and so we have it's, it's a lighting effect on fog, so they go hand in hand. And then uh, I also added church. You know, I don't know of any New England town that doesn't have a, a church, so uh, I was kind of uh, messing around with, with that, adding it. 
Um, very cool stuff in here. And then uh, this one I added uh, snow banks, deep snow. I wanted to get the cars out of there. The fog is still holding. It's a little too peaceful. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, a violently snow situation, uh, storm basically. So, uh, but this is all like how I'm, I'm, I'm building out this property. And, and as a, a point of reference, uh, making this video, I probably spent about five of my fast hours, more than five of my fast hours, um, going through all this and, and, in coming up with, with the image that I wanted and, and, and building it out and, and engineering that prompt. Um, this last one, I added storm chasing and windy because I'm trying to disrupt that, that peaceful feel to it and it's not quite working, but, uh, all right, let's move on to the next. All right, our next um, fundamental building block of um, building a landscape or an, an environment um, image is camera angle. This is uh, this is pretty important, and I wait kind of later uh, in the process to add the camera angle because I want to see how these other elements are are working uh, in concert together. So here are a couple different camera angles that we have. Um, we have an aerial camera angle, and so it would be like a low drone photo, you know, about 70 feet, 75 feet to, to you know, 65 to, to maybe 90 feet. So there's aerial, and then we have high angle. Um, this is a great representation of it. Um, it's almost like it's taking a high angle, yet two and four represent it best, where it's almost uh, taken from first floor, or I guess second second floor of, of a building would be a high angle shot. And then we have low angle shot, the opposite. So that would be, you know, camera needs to be pointed up. Since we have a church steeple, we're low angle to the church steeple. Um, it, it may seem like we're, we're shooting at, at eye level, but since there's an element that is, is up higher, it's actually a low angle shot. So we're, we're, we're shooting upward with our camera. Drone photo, very much similar to the, uh, to, you know, number three is a great representation. Um, a little higher than, than, uh, our aerial, but you know, it's in the same same realm of uh, scope of, of things, and we're all getting used to, to seeing these type of photos. Here's one that is tough for mid-journey to, to figure out, but I put it in there because I think in the future we'll start to see it, and it's worm's eye view. And in, in filmmaking, you know, I used to work in, in making movies, worm's eye view would be that camera is on the ground looking up. Um, they use it in comic books too a lot, uh, you know, just a very extreme from the ground up image. Mid Journey didn't really capture it. This looks like a low angle shot to me, um, but but yeah, Worm's Eye. I, I bet in the future that'll come into play. And then another low angle shot, which is good. These are, these low angle shots are good for, you know, especially street views and things like that. But all right. Yeah, that's, uh. We'll probably go with with a low angle as we're we're building out our prompt here. You know, this is uh, just a, a little something that I'd add. It's it's not a whole whole um, section or anything, but I like sometimes to put color contrast into my prompt. Um, and what that does is, you know, it's it's going to divide your 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 image into um, colors that are opposite on the color wheel but work really well together. So I added color contrast to our prompt. And as you can see, we can have nice warm light from our uh, street lamp here, but then have a, a greenish teal light off in the background on our church. And that's the color contrast. It's it's creating these, these two opposing colors uh, and it's very pleasing to the eye. Um, Normally my, my light in the back here is, is dimming a bit, but I have a teal light in the back and that contrasts nice off of, uh, you know, my orange warmer skin tones. So I actually use that a lot or uh, this guy, this is a, a warmer light over here. And I usually have a cool light here, but as you can see, it's, I need to get a new light pole. That's it. All right. Color contrast, add that in. Okay. So this next stage, final stage is how I, I'm 
I kind of have all the pieces now, at, but they're not really close to the image that I want. So, so now I want to um, go in there and this is what I would call the refinement stage. This first image, it's too fe peaceful. There's no action in it. And really it's the fog. The fog is driving me crazy at this point. I'm not able to break it up because I want more energy. I want this to be a snowstorm. What this looks like to me, uh, if you've lived in New England or something, you have a big snowstorm and then it's followed by warm weather. Then you get this snow fog. That's what that feels like. It's very peaceful, very silent, as I imagine from this image. But that's not the image I'm looking for. I'm looking for something with energy and 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 action to it. So here's our next one. And I, I since I was having trouble with uh, pulling that out of um, Mid Journey, I went to 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 Chat GPT. I was like, well, describe. Uh, what it would be like to be in a snowstorm and it added some stuff and you know void and white out and um, these different terms and everything um, but unfortunately I lost it being a night photo there is a bit more energy to it but the fog is is still even though it's snowing ha and I know it's a snowstorm and it's whited out because of that the there's no energy to it. Um, besides the snowflakes, like in blowing, like I'm just not, I mean, four is like the best at it. But again, here we go. We're getting the snow, but it's still too calm. This isn't, this isn't the, the type of thing. So I'm working to refine that and, and get the energy into this. One of the tools I used was right here. I, I went and I grabbed an old photo or image I did in version three or two, three, I think. Um, that was pretty cool. I had a lot of energy with snowfall and volumetric lit snow blowing. So I pumped that back in and, and I wanted to see how Mid Journey would describe that. And I got some interesting terms in there, ethereal, what were some other, atmospheric. I was, yeah, pumping like a bunch of this, dramatic lighting effects. I think I even dropped pub in there because there was, to see if that would spark anything. But it was just really like, hey, what do you think of this? You know, type of thing. You got some words. I'm not trying to duplicate the image that I have here. I just... I want to know, like, hey, what are your thoughts, Mid Journey? So the next one, still too calm. Um, and I, I was using some of the words and stuff that came from from the describe command. Uh, if you don't know what that is, is you drop a picture into, uh, really quick, drop a picture into Mid Journey, you slash describe, then you drop the picture in, and it will tell you what it thinks the prompt would be. It, reverse engineering. Um, number one, I like a lot with the people walking. It's very uh, post-apocalyptic almost, like just zombies. Still too calm. The prompt at this point felt really heavy to me, so I started to go in and, and remove things and, and just try and see what I can take out that doesn't affect the prompt. It just seemed to be getting heavy. Um, you don't want to just keep adding and adding. If If you can go through and see words that, you know, and test it like, oh, this isn't, this isn't adding to it, to it, you know. What that does is it just spreads the power of 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 mid journey, and if you add something that's that does work, it won't get as much strength because you have the this kind of wasted area. So I kind of went through and and cleaned stuff up on the prompt there. Uh, same here, just still too calm. We're still, you know, as I say, we've we've got the. Uh, the snow blowing and that's cool but this fog is just not working for me very calm very peaceful but lacking energy that's that's my thing so here's the one where we got the blowing snow this is what we're talking about see a little bit in one but three definitely three and four you know me this is how the snow is getting whipped around in front of the lights and they're volumetric and you can get these shapes of just this like streaking snow and it's moving so fast that it's it's uh you know too fast for the shutter to to freeze so you're getting this like blurred effect one thing the journey doesn't handle is bending trees apparently maybe i have to be more precise and i didn't really put that in but now we've got the blowing snow really happy about it um, I, I accomplished it by moving that up to the front of the prompt. 
was it was a photograph of blowing snow in Woodstock, Vermont, um, or or Vermont Village. I I don't remember where we're at right now. I'll put it in though. But yeah, you can see it's uh, you know it's howling around. That is not a peaceful night. Good good night to be inside near the fire. Same with this one. Look at the energy in that snow blowing. This is what I'm looking for. This is you know I'm I'm encouraging Mid Journey to create the effects for me. I was effects artist for uh for for films so it's important to me to to have some some effects and effects animation and and this that looks great it well done here's another one. Oh, look at this one i love this one i mean i can imagine like you can even see like to the right side of the building you're being protected from the wind but the wind is howling down on the other building to the left i love that and we've got Main Street back. Uh, for some reason, we kind of, the prompt kind of shifted into like these soul houses, more residential. And I was looking for Main Street. I want to be telling the story of a town during a blizzard that's just howling. And you just, you know, I've been in these and like, you got to walk home and it's, it's, it, it hurts. It hurts your face, but it's beautiful too. At the same time, this one is, is absolutely perfect. I, I love this. Uh, is same thing, you know, the, the down the street here, you know, we don't have that solid fog. It's, it's broken up. It's, it's, it's being blown around in shapes. So you don't have that peacefulness anymore. It doesn't look peaceful going down that road. Right. And here's another one. And, and you can kind of tell what's being blocked and like where you can, you know, high barricade yourself from, from, from the wind and the snow just bashing you in the face. I hope you have ski goggles. Oh, I, I've done that before. The ski goggles come out if I got to walk down the street during a blizzard. Same one here. Look at that. And the lighting is absolutely fantastic on this steeple. I love that. I love that. It's it's beautiful. This this is the kind of image that I was looking for. Something dramatic. Something, you know, with landscape photography, you want your audience to feel like they're witnessing a once in a lifetime moment and that's what this is the wind is howling the lights are 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 being diffused by the snow that's being blown off the trees off the ground out of the sky and you have this this up lighting up on the on the steeple that's that's diffuse this is just it, it's i love it i love it same thing here but we've kind of lost our downtown we have the church and we're more at a crossroads type of situation. But look at the energy that we're getting out of this snow. Now, I've taken it up uh, even further. And, you know, this is advanced prompting. So I'm waiting. I'm adding weight to the blowing snow. And I'm making it tremendously heavy compared to everything else. I'm upping the weight a little bit of, of Main Street because I want to maintain that. But it is mid-journey knows that the weight uh, or that the snow is incredibly important to me and just look at this blowing off uh, almost in a, a vortex here it's it's ah oh, it's it's doing a wonderful job wonderful here's more waiting same thing i mean would you want to be out in that i would i would but yeah now you have a you have energy in your landscapes that's the the, the key and that's what you want like if you're taking a photo or using mid journey you, it's not just about tranquility, and, and I know there are images that are super tranquil, but the feeling of that tranquility, if, if that's what you're going for, has to be once in a lifetime. Like, like it will never be this tranquil again. I happened upon this, this spot at the right time. But that's not what I want. I want, it's going to be rare that you're going to be in a blizzard like this in Woodstock, Vermont, and, um, you know, having to walk down the road and, you know, the wind is just whipping and howling and it's a once in a lifetime event for you. Same thing here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're piling up and, you know, you know, you want to be on the first chair the next morning because this is a beauty of a storm and, uh, there are going to be fresh tracks. Same here. We kind of lost Main Street on this one, but it is very, a uh, Vermonti, um, it would be a much smaller town I would I would say but but just look at that snow whipping and and you know now that we've moved it up to the front of the prompt and 
and weighted it. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> Look at this one. Are you kidding me? That wind is coming right at you. It is perfect. And we've got Main Street. It's it's just finesse. This is the image that we've been looking for. So beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got some cool tricks and tips from this. These techniques are, they come straight from my photographic experience. No holds barred, this is how I go out. This is what I think about when I'm actually shooting with a physical camera on set. You can check out my Instagram if you want. If you really wanna do me a favor though, like this video, share it, uh, comment below. I love hearing the comments. I'm having amazing conversations with you guys. Subscribe to the channel. I need that, I need to keep this going. We just passed 500 subscribers, that's huge. I'm so thrilled by it. I think we're at 501 right now. But uh, yeah, and let me know if you if you enjoyed this and, and advanced prompting on different subjects, because I'll just, I'll keep making them. All right, well, until next time.